Welcome back to another Kijis Road to Nirvana. This is episode 28, doing fun temporal stuff. Tomorrow is going to be the last Kijis Open Day for 2021. And I've been playing around with making a festive map. Actually, I just totally got um, sidetracked by playing around with Kijis and having fun with Kijis. So I thought I'd just show a little bit um, what I've been working on. I don't know what my total map's going to look like. It's probably going to be a disaster. <laughs> but um, I thought I'd just share some tips on playing with temporal data in QGIS. So I'm going to first just show you kind of what we can, what I'm, uh, what I've produced, and then I'll show you how I built it, and uh, give you a key tip on how you can use non-temporal layers in temporal animations. So first, let's just do a little um, scrub through this temporal bar here. And you'll see that this um, north arrow marker here, uh, if we start the animation like this, you'll see that, that it's off the, um, the south pole. And what I'm trying to do is animate these so that they come in a nice sort of um, curvy way into the center of the south pole. So if I just scrub through slowly, you can see this one is just doing a straight line trajectory like this. And this green one is doing a nice sort of loopy animation and then landing up on the South Pole. So this la this layer for the South Pole is not actually a temporal layer. And what I did, although you'll see that there's a clock icon next to it now, what I did was I went into the layer and I went to the fields manager here and I created a, um, a virtual field, so you can do it just like this, you can go here and say some um, field, call it whatever you want to, and you choose the date type, and then you just put in null. And by doing this, um, it won't actually have any intrinsic date information, but QGIS will understand that on each redraw for the temporal animation, it should also redraw this layer. And that means that if you have got any um, uh, value calculations for any properties of this layer, they'll get recalculated each time the temporal um, marker gets moved to the next time slot. So what I mean by that is, uh, so let's say we've, we've done that, I've already done mine, uh, so I'm not going to do it again. So what you end up with is another date field here, and then you go to the temporal properties over here, and you set it to single field, include dates, start and exclude end, it's fine. Um, and then you'll see I've chosen that animated animation date, which is what I call it, which is just null, but I've chosen that as the field to, to animate. And I've uh, set the duration to one day, which is, you will set this according to whatever your temporal controller is going to be working on. Um, and if you do that, this layer is now being included in the temporal calculations. So whenever the temporal state changes, that layer will get updated. And then um, I can now go to the layer properties. And for example, here I've created a, um, a little formula that I found online. I'll share these notes here. And um, if you want to get it, there's actually a very nice website with a whole bunch of easings, which are sort of um, smooth, curvy transitions between one spatial state and another that you can pass an object through. So I've hacked around a bit to, to make my own um, version of an easing. I'm not very good at math, so I've just been goofing around, basically. Basically, what I did was I established like the where along the slider we are as a measure of between 0 and 100. And then um, I applied this cosine um, expression to that, to that place along the slider. And this magic number is just an absolute magic number that makes sure that it lands up at the center of the South Pole when it's done. And then on the second part here, I'm using the time again in, um, from, from QGIS's time variables. Uh, but now just for the, for the Z um, uh, uh, factor of the vertex, it's going to be just moving it linearly across sort of, so um, by combining these two together, I can produce a little array 
and then I'm saying that basically it must change the offset of this marker by some distance in millimeters based on how far I am on the um, on the slider here. So th this label is just for debug. I can turn it off and then uh, we won't see that. Um, and we can take the same concept and apply it to any layer. So you'll see if I add my country boundaries here, here I'm sliding in the outline and the country into the map. I didn't use an easing, I just did a sort of a linear transition, but you can basically make any layer time enabled, you set a null date to it, and then I do have one real time enabled layer here, which has got sort of increments of a day spanning a hundred and something years, which is also just totally contrived information. As long as you've got something that you're sliding along, you set the null date in your layer, give it a fake date column, and you can time enable it, and then whatever you want to do on each tick of the, the slider, you can have an expression which will update the, the appearance or whatever of your layer. So I've got some other silly examples here. We'll play with some more tomorrow when we're doing um, the open day. So there I've got some penguins that are rotating based on how far I am along the bar and also changing their size. And um, I think that was my, uh, here I had the ice boundaries floating in from the side. It looks a bit messy when you add them all on at the same time, but I hope you get the idea. Anyway, this is just a quick video. Just thought I'd share this because I'll probably forget it. So nothing else is for me to remember how I did this. Um, and the main trick is just that idea of that you set this fake date column in your data set and assign it null and then you can change the state of that layer and it will re-render every time the, the counter moves on your temporal settings. So, I hope you enjoyed that and um, we'll look forward to catching you in the next one. Thanks for watching.